Hello everyone, coming today live for our Devo. I've titled this, My Calling. Uh, some things to consider. Number one, the push. Number two, the pull. The opportunity and the relationships or open doors. Let me begin. I'll be reading from chapter two of Exodus. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she, felt, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrews' babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the women took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you kill the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to Raoul, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, an Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Raoul asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zephora to Moses in marriage. Zephora gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. During, their, during that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. 
So God looked on the Israelites and he was concerned about them. So what this passage is saying is, uh, well, Hebrew babies were being murdered by the Egyptians because they feared their increase. And Hebrews were forced to work and build for the Egyptians as a way to kind of uh, enslave the, this fast-growing uh, population of Hebrews. Uh, Moses' mother uh, saves uh, his life as, at an expense, yet she is given the opportunity to raise him. Uh, Moses kills an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew. He also seeks to bring justice amongst a dispute with two Hebrews. But they criticize Moses for wanting peace when he has shed blood first. Uh, Moses then flees from Egypt and runs away, to, runs away to Midian. There, he defends a local priest's flock uh, from other selfish shepherds. And then he acts as a protector and provider too. Uh, he marries Zephora, a daughter of the local priest he helped. They have a child and they name him Gershom, uh, which stands for foreigner in a foreign land. Finally, God begins his intentions to save his people and bring them into the promised land. They have been slaves in Egypt for too long. Uh, what are some underlying principles of this chapter? Um, God has a plan for each individual. Like Moses, our plan is unique, unique and relevant to us. Um, and that is so awesome, is that um, we are all special and unique to God. And um, He loves us collectively but um, individually and exclusively, uh, he has a particular love for each of us. Uh, and in the same way, he has a particular plan for each of us. No situation is too difficult for God to use. Uh, like Moses' mother, we have to trust him. Um, when, thing, when tough decisions come, um, we have to trust in God that uh, He will have the best outcome for us, uh, especially if we're moving uh, by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, like I believe this was the case. Uh, Moses was moved by compassion and righteous anger when he killed the Egyptian. He also believed in peace, protection for the weak, and providing for those in need. In these situations, he either acted by his convictions, which is uh, God's law, or the Holy Spirit, or simply feeling feelings. Um, and I think one of the most important things that we can get from them, maybe aside from uh, the murder, from him killing the Egyptian, the Egyptian is uh, when we get those inclinations from the Holy Spirit, um, to act, uh, maybe to step out in faith or to be courageous or brave uh, for truth, for love, for kindness. I think we need to move forward and act. Um, of course, there's uh, consequences, uh, but I think more than that, uh, God is looking over us and He's the ultimate judge and He sees the intentions of our heart. And, and we are, when we are moved by the Holy Spirit and, and by His prompting, uh, I think that uh, whatever outcome it is, uh, it, it should be for His glory. Uh, God never forgets His promises. He inclines His ears to uh, our supplications and prayers. And um, it's true, the Hebrews were probably groaning and crying out to God for, for maybe years before this one uh, you know, time, this one moment that God said, okay, uh, 
I'm going to move now. Um, and that's a little bit about trusting God and His timing. Um, I'm sure God could have acted immediately when He knew the Egyptians were going to enslave the Hebrews and, and more than that. But I think uh, He had a purpose, He had a plan, and He needed a, maybe a figure that He can use. Um, and obviously He's not going to rush things and that didn't come until the birth of Moses and still letting him grow up, letting him go through his trials and things, and then finally raising him up and preparing him for this big task. And that's awesome to see that, um, you know, God, you know, what he promised to Abraham, what he promised to Isaac, and what he promised to Jacob, he was going to fulfill. He was going to keep his word. Um, but again, keeping patience and keeping with his plan and his timing. Um, how can we personally apply this passage? Well, what do you feel is the push inside of you? Um, do you feel a desire to begin a particular ministry? Or is there a decisive decision you must take? This is the push here. And... And the reason I chose this scripture is because I wanted to choose the man Moses. And um, as you'll see, uh, Moses has is already showing qualities uh, of what it means. Uh, he's showing righteous anger for the oppressed. He's showing uh, a love for peace. Uh, and then he's also a provider and a protector. And I think all of these qualities uh, obviously were God given, uh, but we're going to see later in his life that he he followed his push, he followed that inclination, and, and that's what you should do. So right now, what is the push that you feel inside? Uh, what is God moving you towards, or what decision are you have you been meditating on and asking Him for guidance? Number two, the pool. What is the environment around you pulling you towards? Uh, all of our life situations are different. Therefore, yours is unique and relevant to you. Um, again, we are, maybe there's opportunities around us, maybe because of the situations that we're in, uh, the people we're around, um, and that is the pool. That is maybe uh, God. Uh, using us to move forward because in this particular situation he needs you or he needs me and um, again it all depends on your environment the surrounding the people around you the need around you what is the need what is the pull and is God moving you pushing you towards that uh, what opportunities are available Again, because there's a need, what different opportunities are there available? And rather than think about uh, the consequences or maybe uh, create excuses, uh, this is a great opportunity. Again, continue with the title, My Calling. This is a great opportunity to find your calling using the needs around you, the opportunities available, and the stirring in your heart to move towards one or more uh, of those opportunities. And lastly, your relationships, your relationships can offer doors of opportunity to accomplish the push inside of you. Um, you know, our relationships, we have tons of those. Uh, and we should use these relationships as opportunities to fill a need. Um, again, these don't just have to do with uh, situations or um, uh, just, uh, you know, different things like that. But they can deal with relationships. Uh, people uh, have needs as well. And if we can help uh, just a tad bit and, um, you know, helping them, um, nurturing them, taking care of them, uh, that is worth doing as well. So, um my calling, your calling, uh, what is it? Follow the push, the pull, the opportunities, and the doors that are open for you.